Hey guys, it's that time again. We have more Q&A to go through. Uh, we got a few questions I would like to dive right into. He has a uh, 2020 T680 and his issue that he, we're having is, is that he's having uh, the data bus going in and out. So just so you guys know, a data bus is pretty much like the backbone of your truck, like the J1939 and the CAN system. It's the communication highway of your vehicle. So unfortunately, this is something that you would have to take to a shop because they're gonna have to get out the wire schematics, trace down and see what's communicating as well as hook a computer up to see which one is not getting the communication between the computers inside your truck. But if you have a Freightliner International or so forth, make sure you go to the proper technician that knows a little bit more about the truck and their wiring. So going on to our second question. This guy, which I think we've talked about it before. So he has a Freightliner Cascadia. When he climbs hills, it will go into gear and then drop into neutral and then eventually grab it again. Or when he comes to a stop light or a stop sign, it would drop out of the gear in the neutral and then go back in. First and foremost, one, do you have any codes on the dash? If you don't, then the next step would be is you would have to take it to a shop. And what I would do is do a uh, clutch and transmission relearn. Sometimes they'll reestablish it, the proper shifting between your truck. If that doesn't work, then the next part would be doing, looking for any kind of leaks or a leak down test, you know, looking for a leak, doing the clutch relearn and transmission relearn. And they're gonna do road tests to find out what's causing the problem. Sometimes it could be the clutch actuator that's failing, the clutch itself, or even the shifting as well. So you would need a technician to take a look at it and further diagnose that problem. Now we have the third one of the day. They wanna know if they can find a shop, if they can go in the shop with the technician to see what they're working on, one, to learn more about it, two, to see what's going on, and three, they would like to learn, see if they can do those kind of repairs themselves. So unfortunately, when you go to a shop, you know, we have insurances that we have to apply by, things can happen, we don't want anybody hurt on the floor, but what you can do is one, always ask for the old part, two, what caused the problem, and three, especially if you're nice about it and you have a cool shop, ask questions. Hey, how did you find that problem? Two, what is the problem? Is this something that I can fix in the future? Is this a common issue that I'm gonna have with my truck? You know, build up your base knowledge of the truck that you're driving and then talk to the technician or the shop and they'll keep you informed of what's going on. If a shop doesn't wanna tell you, maybe that's the place you wanna to try to avoid. But the one that's willing to give you the time, that's the one you're gonna go back to for other repairs. Another one. We got question number four. I think it's a little weird because uh, it's a 2012 Freightliner Cascadia. He's saying that the it's blowing warm and then blows warm in the front, but then temperature gets up to 200 and drops down. I think we have two things going on here. One, when you're seeing the temperature of the coolant raise up to 200, usually about 221, and then the fan will kick on, it'll drop that temperature down to uh, 190. That is normal operation for your coolant. And if you guys remember, I did a video about that coolant, you know, what to look for. Two, now if the blower motor is going in and out, like it's getting warm and it's cooled, two things could happen, right? One, the fan's not kicking on, right? Or two, you could be low on Freon. All right, guys, so question number five. This one's about a 2013 Freightliner Cascadia. He wanted to know if there was another filter for the AC other than the one on the outside. The answer is yes. So on a 2013, you will need a tool of a T torque bit of 20 or 25, remove the glove box and then the filter. I mean, you're gonna have to work your way down and remove the side panel down to the bottom where you see the blower motor and it'll be right about there. And if it's a newer model, which I've done a video, all you gotta do is pull the handle and the filter will be eye level and you just slide that bad boy out. All right, and if you haven't replaced it, it's gonna be gray or black. All right, guys, so that was our Q&A for the day. I hope that was very helpful. If you guys like what you saw today, please pound that like button. If you guys have any more questions for me to answer, woo -hoo, make sure you leave them at the bottom. And guys, if you want more content, more how-to, and more me to answer these questions, you guys gotta subscribe. I'll see you guys around.